All right, so hello everybody. My name is Giovanni and I'm gonna be presenting this work, Old by Gold, Respecting TCP to Engineering in Real-Time Monitor DNS and CAST. It's work that I did together with colleagues here at SIDN, but also colleagues at the University of Southern California, ISI. Um, so this is pretty much the outline of our talk and we're gonna start first with the introduction. So if you're a DNS operator for any CAST DNS operator, you really want to know latency. So for those not familiar with Anycast, I have put this figure here on the right side, which shows what Anycast is. It's essentially um, IP addresses announced via BGP from uh, multiple locations across the globe. So if with Unicast, you have a single location, but with Anycast, you can have multiple locations. Um, and that's pretty much, it's very uh, popular in DNS Anycast. And operators and they strive for reducing latency between clients and their DNS servers. And when there are latency increases, probably indicate some routing problems. And it's kind of hard um, to measure latency for the clients, even though it sounds very straightforward, but it's hard because um, most of the DNS queries are UDP. And what people usually do, they resort to one, um, active measurement platform like Red Atlas or commercial ones. And they, they are really good, but they do not really provide the coverage, exactly coverage of our clients. We can also try active measurements with ICMP, but then it's it's kind of uh, expensive as well. We have to do that yourself and it's hard to apply to IPv6. So the question that we really wanna know, it's isn't the latest information available in any client traffic? Because if that would be the case, you could just derive that from real traffic from real clients and for v6 traffic as well and that would require no extra no active measurements you just analyze the incoming data that you have anyway we're using the existing data and there is one actually there is the rtt that's available in the handshake uh, in the handshakes of the tcp connection dns must support both udp tcp and the server sides and you can use information from the handshake to extract the RTT. It provides all the benefits of above, and we have been deploying that, have deployed that since 2020 at SIDN, which runs the data now, the CCTLD for the Netherlands. <clears throat> so we call this paper also old by good because the technique, it's pretty old, it's from 1996. You use TCP to measure uh, RTT, and the way you do it, if you control the server side here, what you're going to have from the client is the first timestamp you're going to get is when the client sends a same packet to open the connection of, with your DNS server. And you're going to respond to the client, your server responds to the client, and the client later on acknowledge that information, and then you have a second timestamp. The RTT is pretty much the difference between these two timestamps. And after the handshake is done, you know, the client can send a query, DNS query over TCP, gets a response, and so forth. Um, it has been heavily used by in analysis of HTTP traffic and has been proposed multiple times over uh, for DNS. So our, if this has been proposed multiple times over DNS, what's really our contribution here? We do a comprehensive evaluation. We really laid the groundwork here. We did the fun fundamental work to determine if the TCP coverage is enough, it's sufficient to represent your clients uh, in production traffic. And we statistically compare the latency of UDP and TCP traffic over DNS. We also instrument a DNS server to allow you to extract more data from uh, ASs or resolvers you may be interested, uh, forcing them to send TCP queries. And you'll also document successes we had of six operators, uh, including two large cloud providers in, in this technique. So, uh, Let's, let's, let's start with the groundwork that we had to do before we even apply the technique. Um, the requirements for you to use DNS TCP, the RTT from the TCP traffic is, is that the TCP traffic must provide enough coverage, both spatial and temporal, meaning you want the TCP traffic also to be representative for your UDP traffic. Um, and it has to provide similar latency uh, to UDP so you can actually generalize the results. And it turns out that a very tiny, fraction of the queries are over TCP or sent over TCP. 95% is UDP, 5% is TCP. But in our results, they come from 22% of our resolvers and 44% of the ASs. And these are the ASs that send most traffic. In fact, 
you see that the top 100 ASs here, they send 78% of the queries. So the traffic is very concentrated in DNS. So you have all this data there sitting there and you can extract information from there. Um, so the coverage in, in, in TCP is pretty good. The temporary coverage we get uh, per hour, we are getting on that now roughly 20,000 ASs per hour. And you see here that for that now, most of the traffic comes from uh, 1,000 ASs here. So it's pretty good too. It can even be improved later on, further on, if you use it, this version of not with uh, instrumented. Uh, another part of the groundwork we did was to compare statistically uh, the performance of TCP UDP. Uh, we could not do that using our passive measurements. So we use uh, right atlas and, and configure them to send queries to the same server over TCP UDP. And if that passed as a student T test, we had a very see a strong correlation here between the UDP uh, latency and the TCP latency here. And the conclusion is from this graph of the, from this analysis that the TCP predicts UDP latency. So now that you lay the groundwork, we can actually, what can you actually do with this analysis? Uh, you can detect problems at the individual NACAS sites, you know. Uh, any cast network has multiple sites. It's where you announce the prefixes. And what you see there, if you, if you analyze the TCP data coming in, you can figure it out which sites are, have these large RTTs and that suggests problems. And you can only do that just by analyzing uh, the TCP traffic coming in. You wouldn't get that from other sources. You can also detect problems not per, uh, per site, but per client AS. We see this particular client AS here that has an RTT above 200 milliseconds. Something is not right with this thing. So uh, that's the power of this tool and this technique. You can actually find bugs and from that point on, you can try to troubleshoot them. And that's what pretty much we did. We found problems and we found solutions. So it allows us to actually find four different problems. I'm gonna talk about three of them here uh, in order to offer partners in here. So let's see what we did with that. So uh, in this graph here show our Anycast network is we just chose like five locations across the globe that has this same prefix being announced. Uh, it's just a sample demo. And a cloud provider here that has multiple data centers. And what you really wanna have is that the cloud uses nearby NECAS sites. So for example, sites from the cloud in North America would reach your, uh, the well, locations from the cloud in North America would reach your site in Los Angeles, South America here in Rio, and the European African ones here uh, in Rome, and the Asian Pacific ones here uh, to Singapore. But what we found in our case here, that's uh, both Google and Microsoft were sending all their global traffic to only one site on, in our network. Um, you see that they sort of uh, ignore all the other sites here. And uh, so with this analysis, you could see that the, actually the RTT for this both tunnel system was pretty high. And that's what we call DNS polarization. Any cast polarization is when um, entire tunnel systems just see one of your sites. And we did a bunch of things with BGP to fix that. We were working with operators and we were able to reduce the latency from before polarization to roughly 100 milliseconds to Google to 10. And for Microsoft, it was 90, we reduced to 20. Uh, all of this in the paper, but that's the benefits of this technique. Another problem we found is what we call distant lands. Uh, it occurs when a BGP maps a client to very far away sites. Uh, for example, here, the site in Yorita in Japan is seeing the clients have a very high latency. Uh, so what we did to analyze the clients that actually come from this particular site, and most of them come from this AS that's located in China with, uh, with high latency. And top eight ASs are from China, so the RTT shows us how you could fix your problem and our tool identifies those lists in China and the solution would be fixing the problem in a period of Chinese ISPs. Another thing you can do is real-time monitoring of your NACAS network. And our tool detected a particular case in Sydney where sort of a sudden the RTT for the Sydney side, side grew very really high and that was because a tier one provider had a route leak there and it drew all the European clients to Sydney instead of Europe and we contact the operator and fix it. All right, so how you can deploy it? Um, operators that capture the traffic, they should capture the tra their TCP traffic and they can use our tools, NT or DNS and to extract RTT. And they can also use not DNS uh, to induce more queries. 
So in summary, DNS RTT is available if you just look at it. We support both capture and analysis. We solved real world problems here um, in, in fixed cloud polarization, routing anomalies. And I recommend you to try our tools uh, on your anycast network. Thanks.